Welcome to Naresh Technologies, I am Bangaraju and these are continuation series of the ASP.NET videos. Uh, in the previous video, I was just explaining about state management. What is state management? Web applications are stateless. What is it? Uh, once, we once we send a value to the server for processing, that value once the processing is completed will be destroyed from the server once the output comes to back to the browser. That is, if you send any value to a server, the server will process the values and afterwards a result will be sent back to the browser and once the result comes back to the browser immediately those values are destroyed on the server so that we can make use of the values in the next time request. I already shown you an example in that video, a simple very simple example what is that? A button on my screen, a simple button on my screen with the text as hit count and uh, what is the logic? I declared one count variable and afterwards I was trying to increment the count value and trying to print the counter value. So run this, when we click on the hit count I get a value 1 and when I click on the hit count I am expecting the value to increment but it is not happening. Why is it not happening? Because every time the page gets processed totally from top to bottom and once the page processing is completed and the result is sent back to the browser immediately the complete page gets destroyed on the server. See, when I click on the button for the first time, when I click on the button for the first time, when I click on the button for the first time, a request goes to the server and once a request goes to the server, this count is initialized and afterwards incremented by 1 and the response comes to the browser. Once the response is coming to the browser, immediately the count variable is destroyed on the server. So that is the reason why if I click on the hit count again, again count is initialized with 0, again it is going to be initialized with 0. You place a breakpoint here, now run your code, click on hit count. So when you come here, if you notice this, if you notice this, the count value here, if you notice the count value, count value is 0, the count value is 0. Now run this now again click on it, again you come here and again if you check the count value will be 0. Every time you click on this, the count value will be 0 only. So this is what we call as the statelessness. So web applications are stateless. To overcome this problem, we require to follow state management. What is state management? State management is a process of maintaining the state of values between multiple requests of the page or pages. And to maintain the state of values, ASP.NET provides us different options where those values can be maintained either on the client machine or on the server machine. So we are provided with two options in ASP.NET for maintaining the state. One is on client side maintenance, server side maintenance. And to maintain the state of values on client machine, we have a list of options. What is the first one? Hidden fields, query strings, view state and control state and then we have cookies. So let us just try to understand about each and everything in detail today. So first let us start with the hidden fields. So what are these hidden fields and how do we use the hidden field? See, hidden field is an HTML control. Uh, to demonstrate this, I am adding a new web form. Same design, let us add a button here, ASP colon button, id is equals to button 1 run it equals to server, text equals to hit count, on click equals to generate one event handler. And now I want to increment the value and I want to implement the similar logic like the previous one, a similar logic like the previous one but unfortunately what is the problem? If at all I am going to declare a count here. If at all I am going to declare a count here, I will be losing the count value for every time. So to overcome this problem here, I am just trying to add one hidden field, ASP colon hidden field, hide is equals to hf count, run it equals to server, run it is equals to server. And if you go to the design view, in the design view, we can just find out this hf count like this, but in the runtime, no one can view this and in the runtime this is rendered for us as HTML 
input type is equals to head. Um, our button is rendered as input type is equals to submit, hidden field is rendered as input type is equals to hidden. We can have a look. Right click, we are not able to see the hidden field on the screen, but if you go to view source, in the view source you can find input type is equals to submit, input type is equals to hidden. Submit is nothing but a button and hidden is our hidden field. And right now there is no value here. If you want you can provide a value also, something a default value 0 and this value will be in the string format, value is equals to 0. And a very important point here, like uh, generally for, uh, for our uh, Asperger controls, to hold the value we have text property for buttons, text boxes and all. But when you come to hidden field, it is going to be value property, not text property. We have a property called value. Value is equals to, you will be having a value there. Fine. And now it is a default value 0. So now what is my requirement? Coming back here, I want to increment this count. So if at all I try to write the code like this, count plus equals to 1, count plus equals to 1. And if I say response dot write, response dot write, hit count plus count. If at all I say this, hit count plus count. You can just understand we are losing the value. We do not get hold of the value. The value will be lost every time. So every time the count is going to be, every time the count is going to be initialized with 0 and whenever I click on the button, it will become 1 and shows here as it count 1 every time. But I do not want, I want to maintain the state of values. To maintain the state of value, what am I doing right now is, first time I wanted to pick the value from the hidden field. First time I click on this, I want to pick the value from the hidden field. Every time I want to pick the value from the hidden field. So I am just only declaring this count here, not initializing, just a count. And here I am writing count is equals to, I want to access the value of the hidden field. HF count dot text, but text is string, but text, I am sorry, hf count dot value. But remember, value is string. Because value is string, I cannot assign into this. So, int dot parse of count. So, what is the value? Initial value is stored here 0. So, value, the value will come 0 here. And after getting this, I am writing count plus equals to 1, incrementing the count. And then I am going to publish the count. Then I am going to publish the count. But now also when I run, I will get the same output. That is every time it will be 1 only. Why? The initial value of the hf count is going to be 0. You will pick that, increment by 1 and displaying it. So every time you click the same thing happens. Let us set a breakpoint first. Now come to the browser, click on the hit count. Yeah, first you are trying to pick the value. First we are trying to pick the value from there. And when you see the value, the count value will be 0, incremented by 1, incremented by 1, displays. What is the value displays? 0. Again when I click on this, again also you are going to get the same thing only. Again the count is 0, again incremented by 1. So there is no difference in the previous one and the current one right now. Why? Because we have not done anything special here. So simply remove the breakpoint here keep clicking on it, it will not increment. But I want it to be incremented. To increment it, what am I doing in the last is, hf count dot value is equals to count dot to string. Because count is integer, I am calling to string and assigning it to the hf count again. So before going to send the output to the browser, I am overriding the hidden field value here with the new value. So what happens? Run. Again, let us add a breakpoint. Click on the count. First request. First time I clicked. I am sorry, not first time. First time I clicked. When I clicked on this for the first time, when I clicked, the count value will be 0, which is incremented by 1. See there. It is also executed, so incremented by 1. And displays me the hit count as 1. And now you see, if you go to the view source here, you can notice it. The hidden field value is not equal to 0. The hidden field value is 1. Because it is 1, when I click on the button for the next time, it will pick the hidden field value. What is the hidden field value? The hidden field value is going to be, the hidden field value is going to be 1. 
it has read the value 1 and now increments the hidden field value it becomes 2 and now it is going to display the count as 2 it is going to display the count as 2 again 3 4 5 6 7 I can increment the values like this so this is how you can maintain the state of values so this is the first option what we are provided with for maintaining the state of values hidden fields okay and see these hidden fields unfortunately what is the drawback what you have with the hidden fields is I will shown you the hidden fields are rendered on the browser in the form of um, input type hidden see the values here so security wise you may have a problem with this particular thing because the values are just stored directly here if you do not want to make the values to be visible you need to explicitly encrypt it and after encrypting the values has to be stored here okay otherwise if you directly store the values it is a straight way accessible or visible to everyone here so that is the reason why directly storing the values here may be a security problem what we may face here so this is a, one of the major drawback if you want to overcome this uh, you need to write all the coding for encrypting your data and store the encrypted data again take back and decrypt the data and that becomes an extra code for us encrypting decrypting and all the things but still <coughs> we can do it okay so the drawback is the values are visible to the end user when he goes to the view source and one more thing uh, these hidden fields are going to maintain the state of values not only within the same page not only within the same page if you want you can access them in the other pages also if you want you can access this in the other pages also what I mean to tell is see I am adding one more button one more button next to this open new page navigate post back URL is equals to I want to just transfer the control to another web form another web form I do not have any web form let me add a new web form first I will name it as get hidden values that is the name of my web form so blank form come back and post back URL is equals to get hidden field values dot ASPX get hidden field values dot ASPX I am just trying to transfer the control to another page in this context so from one page I am just transferring the control to another page here okay fine now in the second page in the second page this is the second page what is that get hidden field values here I want to access the hidden field value I want to access the hidden field value if I want to access the hidden field value I can access the hidden field value in this place just like a text box value we are accessing another form same process see string value is equals to request dot form of just give the name of your hidden field what is the name of the hidden field hf count response dot write response dot write your current hit count is plus value current hit count is plus value now let me run the first web form keep clicking on the button hit count value cable increment so 8 when I click on open new page it has to show me there your current hit count is 8 means the hidden field value of the current page is able to be accessed in the other pages in the other pages also we can just access the hidden field values so this is how we can maintain the state of the value the first option what I explained in this video that is hidden fields so what is a hidden field hidden field is nothing but it is also a control and it is going to be rendered it is going to be rendered into ASP colon hidden and it will store the maintain the values on the browser without making them visible to the end user the name itself is telling you hidden it is hidden so it is not visible to the end users so that is how we can maintain the state of the values with the help of the hidden fields but drawback drawback is anyone who can go to the view source can access the values if they do not want to access those particular values there what they need to do is simply they need to encrypt and store the data that becomes an additional burden for a developer but still that is possible and hidden field values are accessible in the 
other pages also when you just jump from one page to another page or when you're going for a cross page post back on the cross page post back you can access the hidden field values thank you for watching the video for more videos please subscribe to our youtube channel naresh it